she, she had been working with was asking, oh, do you remember me? And, you know, so I think that really, that really lifted both of our hearts a lot. So the community has been like uh, outstanding as far as their uh, support and the love and um, caring that they've shown has been unbelievable. So that's been, uh, so we most, we're, we're very much in debt to the community and uh, the doers that everyone has sent. Has sent. It was a uh, time when, and, you know, I didn't. I felt pretty powerless at times. Uh, I wasn't able to go to work when I wanted to go to work a lot of times, so it was really constricting. Um, yeah, I was making a lot of doers, and uh, I guess it really humbled me that I didn't have much control over what was going on. Uh, it was a woman I, my best friend in life, and she was not doing well, and there was not much I could really do about it other than console her and she's a nurse I didn't think it would be that I would be taking care of her you know I thought it would be the other way around that was that would be more fitting as the way I look at it but as one of the brothers told me you know that's not Allah's plan Allah's plan is for you to take care of us so so kind of buck up and you know rise to the occasion so alhamdulillah it was uh it was quite a quite a hard experience for me I'm not sort of that kind of guy the nursing kind of guy but um, family, friends, and like I said, the, the community was like outstanding as far as their support for me also. So they would always ask how she was doing and um, yeah, it was, it was really uh, quite a good support for me. So it helped me out a lot. Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, death is inevitable and uh, you know, this life is a preparation for it. But you know, we're all scared of it and uh, it's an unknown and uh, None of us know what our tabulation is at this time and, you know, just things that we have no control over. So I think that reality was really sprung upon me at an unexpected time. And, you know, some of the brothers said, like, this is, Allah loves you. He's showing you this test so that you can be stronger and all that, you know, while tears are rolling down my eyes and I'm feeling like a little baby. Like, so now I can kind of reflect on it. But, you know, I guess when we're going through things, a lot of times it's hard to see uh, the hikmah of it. But Allah reveals things in his own ways and his own time. So I'm, I'm thankful for the journey. I feel like I'm, I should be one of the ambassadors because I know the outside world. I'm a North American. Uh, I know the population. And, uh, you know, I used to be like those guys who, don't, who are not into, the, into Dean. Um, so... I think we could probably do a better job. Uh, I think, and now that Islamic phobia is at such a, a rampant pitch, um, I think it's even more um, incumbent upon us to come up with more inv inventive ways and more persistent ways to actually put our message out. I think the, you know, the journey into Islam, I just brought one, or I brought two people. One, one person was a family member, the other one was a, a a work colleague. So I was happy about the work colleague. He responded very well. And when I checked Facebook, he had put pictures and then a lot of his friends said, yeah, it's good. You should know about Islam. You should learn about these uh, sort of things. So, you know, as I think there will come a time when the people will be embracing Islam in troops, you know, and uh, but I think it's up to us to make it happen. And, uh, you know, it's going to take a lot of courage because it's easy for us to hide. Like, I could take off my hat and uh, you see my little bald head with a little bit of hair coming and hear my American accent. There's no way you would think I'm Muslim unless you saw me and thought I was a Pakistani. But the minute I opened my mouth, oh, he's not a Pakistani. He's, he's American. He can't be a Muslim. But uh, so little things. I think it's different from the women. The women wearing the hijab, alhamdulillah, is very uh, apparent. But, you know, the brothers, I think we need to show a little bit more bravery. And uh, I think there's a story by Sheikh, uh, I don't want to mispronounce his brother's name, Sheikh Osama. He was, he was talking about he's from like the West Indies. And I heard the story, his, the father is always in like, uh, you know, Arab garb in the West Indies. So the brothers were visiting him and said like, why, why are you always in a garb like this? Like, you don't have to do that as a Muslim. And he said, well, because the sisters have to wear the hijab and it makes them like very obvious. So in support of them, I want to be obvious too as a Muslim. So I think these kind of things, but it's, you know, it's interesting because as a Sunni, 
I think we were much more into wearing the garbs and coming out on Juma Day like proud and like strutting down the streets like, uh, you know, with our turbans and the whole shot. I see that Shia Islam is, you know, wouldn't dare wear a turban because this is, this is the garb of the scholar. So I think we're a little bit more knowledgeable. And uh, our dress is pretty, you know, we look like we could be Christians or whatever. We don't wear topi. And if you look around the crowds, even on Eid Day and all that, Eid Day when we were Sunni brothers, hey, Eid, man, we're like to the bone. Like, you know, everything is like, it's, on like, on, it's like the Sunday school when we were kids. We were wearing our finery. And we're proud. And we walk in the streets and the people could honk, blow their horns, you know, Toronto, good care. We love it, right? So that kind of pride, I don't see that um, transferring as a Shia, we're much more, you know, subdued, conservative. You look in the, the congregation of uh, Juma, you take a picture, it could be maybe one brother got a topi on, you never know. So I don't question it because I know it's all it's about our hearts. But if we're talking about sort of exposing and uh, educating, the, educating the public, then I think we could be a little bit more uh, apparent. So our neighbors will be curious and they can ask. Oh, I didn't know you was Muslim. Uh, tell me about this. Tell me about that. Because I find if you're open to people and people, especially if people know you, then because this year, like when um, about four or five people came to me and said, "Oh, I want to go to this thing," and I said, "Oh, sorry, like registration is always closed now. Maybe next year." So they were quite disappointed. But then I found out that they could have come at seven o'clock. 7.30 after the dinner was over. So it, all, it was all about how many people were going to be there for dinner. So me, I wasn't that informed, so I didn't really know. By the time I called them back, I said, oh, you guys can come at 7.30, be okay? It was, you know, it was kind of too late. So, you know, I think I'm also um, very guilty of not being as involved in the masjid as I could be, trying to go to work and, you know, these other kind of things. So um, I think I, the, in my students for myself first, I could definitely do more. But I think as, as a community, and um, we see these things like in Dearborn, Michigan, you know, there's Muslim communities there. They got the football teams. And so, you know, I grew up with these sort of things. This is what North America is kind of about, about. So I think we can be more visible. We can have a Muslim hockey team. When I was here in the school working with the kids, we did some basketball. But we weren't involved in the um, private school leagues and these sort of things. So... Um, I realize that people want to be cautious as far as exposing the kids to the quote North American culture and society, but I think we have to have more faith in, in the youth that they're tougher than we think than they th than we think they are, and I think it's a lot of times it's the adults' sort of apprehension as far as to letting the kids really go out and experience and be able to come back and still be loyal. I think we the parenting. Um, could use some input. And again, uh, my wife and I are, are trying to play some role in that. We probably could play a better role. She's getting well, so we hope that uh, we can return to the school and maybe do contribute some more to that. I would say, like, uh, follow your heart and uh, use your head. Um, and realize that if you're even contemplating it, it's a blessing from the Creator because the wrong path is like the path of North America. You can go down it and you get blinded very easily. Um, and be conscious because I look at myself, I feel very fortunate that I'm not uh, an ISIS fighter in Syria right now, facing, you know, murdering people and dying in that state of being a killer and a murderer. I could have easily have been there if I hadn't been introduced to al -Bayt. Because as a Sunni Muslim, to go fight jihad and all that, we were the guys that would have did that because we are the, we're the tough guys. We like, you know, we're the street guys. We fight. So very easily, me and the brothers that I was with, we could be there very easily. So fortunately, we get the insight into this and now we're on the other side. So I'd much rather be the target of those, that kind of oppression or that kind of, that kind of ideology rather than have been immersed in it.
because I was there at a time and it's only by the grace of Allah that I'm now sitting here in this position. So for people to be very um, cautious when they're making um, decisions at this, at this point and also to uh, consult many authorities, not just one or two, not just one scholar, talk to many scholars because uh, I think that's an advantage. You'll get a, a, a wider point of view and um, you'll find the truth within that rather than just putting all your faith in one particular um, scholar. I think it's good to go to as many as you can. Um, well, I give my salam alaikum to all the brothers and sisters there and uh, hope to see you in Hajj one day if I'm lucky enough to return. Um, yes, just remember the, remember the sacrifices of Imam Hussein and uh, make this be our, um, our call for us to be a little more stronger, a little more um, assertive. Um, this North America is Allah's country. It's not like, so this cultural thing about where well, I'm from here, I'm from there. I'm an immigrant to, from America. But like, I feel like Canada is just like America as far as I'm concerned, as far as my entitlement. So I think if you come from far away, you come from close by, you know, this is Allah's place. So own it. Don't, uh, you know, don't let the culture of Canada, which is changing under Harper. Hopefully things could be different under Trudeau. But, um, you know, we're here and uh, we're full citizens from the jump because of the sacrifice we made to come here and the contributions that we have uh, made here makes, makes us full citizens, no second class anything. And of course, Islam wants us to be the best at that whatever we do. So that doesn't just mean at our occupation, but it's also as far as a citizen of this country. So I think Sheikh Mutsazar is always telling us that we need to be more involved in politics and um, you know, writing letters. I think this is, this is definitely true. Well, I come from the uh, you know, background that we were oppressed in the United States for hundreds of years, and that fight is still going on now. And uh, now with Islamophobia, the thing that um, is most hurting to me is that I see the black community in America all of a sudden, like, they're no longer the target, and they want to be big Americans all of a sudden. So for them, I say, you guys wake up. Like, uh, this is all a trick. And, uh, but this life we have is precious and, and it's short. So own where you're at and be proud of what you believe in. And, uh, you know, be kind to people and uh, treat people well. But uh, don't let people run over you and stand up for your rights. Because we do have the right to uh, Allah's land and to live happily and freely and without oppression. So that would be my message.